Kia ora tato. Today I'm going to be talking about co-creating space ecosystems in emerging countries and why it's really important to the future of humanity. But first, allow me to talk about my personal journey, my waka. I was born in the Philippines and raised in the Philippines during the Apollo Moon program, which is why as a kid, I really, really, really wanted to be an astronaut. But being a female living in a developing world, that wasn't really an option for me. And besides, I wasn't really good at math and science either. <laughs> I was born in a different time in a different place. So this is 1986, at the height of the Marcus regime, and I find myself sitting in front of a tank to help restore democracy in the nation. That was my world. But somehow, either by luck, faith, or stubbornness, I managed to get from there to where I am today. I'm not going to talk much about what I've done, but suffice to say that after three decades of working in the space industry, writing a book on space, and also helping the first space tourists go up to the space station, I think I've pretty much ticked all of my bucket list. But actually, well, I haven't gone in space yet. I know that's coming. But kidding aside, I really think that my life is truly blessed, which is why one of my passions is to make sure that any kid who dreams and boldly dreams of changing the world would have the same opportunity as I have. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> but with exponential technologies today, like AI and robotics, nanotech and biotech, access to space has actually been democratized. Case in point, that cell phone in your pocket, which we normally take for granted, that's 120 million times much more powerful than all of the Apollo program computers combined. That's a supercomputer in your pocket. Today, we get our weather data from really expensive satellites that you need to actually launch for millions of dollars. And equally, ground stations that are very expensive to capture that data. But now, you can go online and buy a software-defined radio, just like this, for 20 bucks. And this is so much powerful that you can actually take that same image from an unencrypted satellite you know, passing overhead, and you can analyze that data using software that's free that you can download now on your computer. So exponential technologies has created new opportunities for the space industry. That is not available five or 10 years ago. Today, three guys in a garage can compete with governmental space agencies and big aerospace companies for contracts. And they're no longer just in Silicon Valley, they're in India, they're in Patagonia, or in New Zealand. So I truly believe that we are heading towards this abundant future, and it's really exciting. But I am still worried, because how can we be sure that this Star Trek universe that we all want is not just going to be for those who have the resources to make it happen? While the rest of the world, like where I come from, from the developing world, is stuck in a Mad Max universe. In 2013, there was this movie, Elysium, that came out. And it actually painted a very dystopian picture between the haves and the have-nots. That gap is still increasing today. That's terrifying to me. I really want to make sure that that future never happens. So today, I'm actually concentrating on the UN Sustainability Development Goals number 10 which is to decrease inequality locally and globally, and for me, on a much longer time scale. So I'm here with two of my fellow co-founders from California, and we're part of the Edmund Hillary Fellowship Program under a very unique global impact visa. Our moonshot is to democratize space for everyone so that nobody gets left behind. 
And actually, just recently, this is very recent, like four days ago, we incorporated a social enterprise called Spacebase. And we're focusing on space industries for emerging countries, one nation at a time, starting with New Zealand. So how does actually one create a space economy when there is none? Well, I think that there is a holistic roadmap for building sustainable space industries. And we start by capacity building through education and training, birding startups, and then supporting space companies to make them thrive. And today, there's also exponential technologies that has bridged the gap between just creating companies and having really successful business that have public and private partnerships. But you still need an ecosystem with multi-partnerships between governments and academia and corporations and entrepreneurs to actually work together collaboratively, not competitively, to help those entrepreneurs go through that journey. At Spacebase, we're actually focusing on creating that ecosystem. And we're doing it in two ways. One is we're building a networking collaborative platform, a community platform, essentially a one-stop shop for entrepreneurs to find everything that they need to create successful businesses. And the other is we're creating a funding platform. We want to leverage innovative models such as pre-selling services, using tokens and cryptocurrencies, using blockchain technology. We truly believe that New Zealand is the place to prototype this initiative. With a progressive government that can actually create those policies and legal frameworks to make businesses thrive, and having a premier location for launching satellites Come to think of it, New Zealand's isolation is really its advantage. There's nothing in the east and there's nothing in the south. So less air traffic means more frequency of launches and more launch uh, angles to choose from. It also has a thriving entrepreneurial and a technical community to leverage from. And lastly, it now has the launch capability and in the infrastructure through Rocket Labs. So New Zealand is now posed to be a true space-faring nation. I really believe that we can have a Star Trek universe for everyone, where humanity is not just going to be good stewards of planet Earth, but are going to be a multi-planetary species that will explore the solar system for resources and settlement. I really hope that New Zealand will play a big role in making that future happen, so much so that maybe in a hundred years' time, we can look back at today and thank the people who actually made it happen. The time is now. Let's co-create that space ecosystem here in New Zealand, here in Aitoroa. Kia ora.